everyone, it's Alice, and today we're gonna do a reading vlog. I want to read some more cozy fantasy. I read my first like cozy fantasy books earlier this year, I think. I think it was earlier this year, and I really, really enjoyed it. So I want to try and read some more. Find some more favorites. After I did that first vlog, which went really well, I read so many good books in that vlog. After it though, I got so many recommendations for other cozy fantasy books and over the past couple of months I have gotten a lot of them, so I really need to read some of them now. I thought I would try another three and they, I think, have kind of different vibes. I've picked these three, which I'm gonna read. This one is the one that was the most recommended and as you may be able to see, I already started this. I read like a third of this last night actually. Got a little bit of a head start. So this is gonna be my first read, but then I also want to read this and this, which is a graphic novel. This one just looks super cute. The art looks really good and it's about a teen witch who I think meets like a werewolf and they become friends and it's a romance, so I'm assuming maybe something else happens. This one is the one I think is gonna be the darkest out of the three. This, like my idea of this is that it's very cottage core. I don't know if I'm just basing that on the cover, but that's like the vibe that this is giving me. The story follows a scholar who, like her area of expertise are fae and fairies. And that's all I really know about this. I think she is like working on a book and we meet her when she's like doing research for the book or something. I don't really know, but it sounds very interesting. And this cover is just beautiful. This one though is like I mentioned, one of the ones that was the most recommended to me. And it feels like one of the quintessential cozy fantasy books that are sort of making their rounds. And this is the one that I decided to start with, just because, I don't know why, I just did. <laughs> I do feel like I have a really solid TBR and I'm really looking forward to reading all of these because the other cozy fantasy books that I've read, I just enjoyed so much. And there's something about this genre that I just adore. I really like cozy books, but I also think there's something extra cozy about like a little bit of magic and a little bit of like fantasy elements and witches. And I just love cozy things. Like I mentioned though, I have already started this and I'm like 120 pages in, which is actually a third of the book. So I did quite a lot of reading last night. And at the very beginning of the book, we meet our main character as she is going to this event, which is a gathering of witches. And we're told that they do a gathering once every three months. And they always do it in like different places and blah, blah, blah. And the reason that they gather so rarely and the reason that they keep moving around is because a lot of witches together is like considered dangerous in this world. This is urban fantasy, by the way. So it's set in England. And we meet this witch who is our main character at this event. And we, I think she's in her twenties or something. And we learn a little bit about her. She comes across as quite a lonely character. And one of the reasons for that is the witches cannot gather. So she doesn't really have anyone to share her magic with and she has to hide it. And she keeps moving around. And it seems like in her upbringing, she was very lonely. Like one of the other witches that she knows and that is in this group who's like elderly has taken care of her but she wasn't really present and she seems to have been raised by nannies and carers, but they kept being switched out because they, if they saw any magic, they would have to go. And so she doesn't seem to have had the best childhood, I gotta say. The reason that she had to be raised by this elderly witch who is not related to her is because of this curse that we learn about, which is a curse that affects all witches that are born which makes their parents pass away within a very short amount of time. So if someone gives birth to a witch, they're gonna die because of this curse. So almost all, if not all, of the witches in this world grow up as orphans because of this curse. She does seem to have a slightly strange relationship with this woman who took care of her because 
like I mentioned, this woman wasn't really present. And she's also like kind of the head witch of this group of witches who gather. And it also comes up in the very beginning of the book that our main character, she like posts online content with her doing witchcraft, but because no one believes that magic is real, it just looks like it's fake or whatever. And she seems to quite enjoy that and that's a way for her to like share her magic with people. And this is how she ends up in the situation where she ends up because someone sees this content and recognizes that it is actually real magic. This guy who is elderly, he sends her a message and is like, I need you to come here and help us with something. And despite her reservations, she actually goes because she has this feeling that this is, that there is something here. And this is where we end up, like this happens very early in the book, this is where we end up where I'm assuming we're gonna spend almost all of the story, which is at this place called Nowhere House, where this guy who is elderly is living with his husband and there's a housekeeper and there's a guy, like a younger guy, more our main character's age, who runs a library from this house. But most importantly, there are three young witches that live at this house and they cannot control their magic. And our main character, like the reason that she's there is that these people want her to teach them how to control it. The kids are obviously all orphans because of this curse, but the woman who owns the house is also a witch, but she's not any of their mothers or anything. She's just gathered them and kept them at the house because they need a place to stay. And this woman is just like off doing work, so she's not there. And these people who are taking care of these kids are getting quite desperate because there is something that's gonna happen towards Christmas. There's someone coming to the house and they can't avoid it. So they need the kids to learn how to control their magic before that time. So this puts a little bit of a time limit on things, but it doesn't feel super stressful yet, to be honest. And also it's a cozy fantasy. So I'm just assuming that all of it is gonna work out. The kids are quite funny though, especially one of them who absolutely loads our main character and just is scowling all the time and Loki kind of wants to kill her, which because this is a very cozy and funny book, it's just like a funny thing. Anyways, at the point where I'm at now, our main character is kind of just getting settled in this place and getting to know the people there. And this is very enjoyable so far. It's super easy to read and very easy to get into. And it's very much what I expected it to be. I do think that I have slightly high expectations of this book. So I'm wondering what's gonna happen as we go along, but it just feels very cozy and warm. This is also a romance, by the way, so I'm assuming there's gonna be some romance in here, and I think it's pretty clear who she's gonna have the romance with, which is like the librarian, who also is like super grumpy, which I'm kind of enjoying because <laughs> him and like one of the kids, the kid who keeps scowling and is like low key wanting to kill her, they're kind of like the same vibe. Because he's like that, I'm assuming this is gonna have that like grumpy sunshine trope, which I quite enjoy because our main character is a ray of sunshine. She is super, super sweet and tries to be happy all the time. And yeah, it's enjoyable and entertaining and it's just a good time, which is what I feel like cozy fantasy is most of the time. And I'm interested to see where this is gonna go. Yeah, I'm just gonna have to keep reading. This was very, very sweet and very enjoyable. Maybe slightly predictable, and I think that there are some things that are a little bit convenient, but overall I very much enjoyed it. As we go on in the story, there are several things that happen. There's magic and teaching the kids how to do magic. There are some secrets that come out. There's a blossoming romance, and it sort of builds up towards the end in a way. I will say I didn't ever really feel like there was any tension where I was worried about what was gonna happen, but I think that's just because it's a cozy mystery and I just assumed that everything is gonna work out, if that makes sense. It is very, very cozy. It's the kind of book that will make you feel all warm and fuzzy inside. And I feel like the best way to sum up this book is just 
it's enjoyable. Having finished it, I don't really know if it's the kind of book that's going to stick with me though. Like it made less of an impact on me than I maybe hoped that it would. I think that there are some things with the characters that pulled me out of the story a little bit, like when you're told the entire book that a character is this particular way and then towards the end of the book they do something that is like the opposite of it, but there hasn't been... I don't know if I felt like that arc worked with some of the characters. I also think that although the romance is enjoyable, I think that there are some parts of the dialogue that pulled me out of it a little bit. And this is just like a thing that I don't necessarily like in books, which is where two characters are talking and they're saying like, I know exactly how you feel and they like list all of the things that the other person feels to sort of that's how you learn what the character feels. I don't know if that makes sense, but there were some things with that that I didn't love. But like overall, I just had a good time with this. Like it was very enjoyable. I looked forward to reading it and it's just very light, very cozy, but also not necessarily the cozy fantasy or cozy type of book that makes an impact, at least on me. I don't know if I feel like this book is super, like, I wonder if it's a little bit forgettable. I feel like that's a harsh word to use because I did really enjoy it and I found it very entertaining. And it's also a book that I would recommend, but I don't know if it really will stick with me. It was just a nice little break in a way. There are a lot of elements to it though that I really liked and I really liked our main character. I like the grumpy sunshine trope and the magic was really cool. I just think it's a little convenient in parts, I guess. I don't really know. I feel like this sits somewhere between like a three and four stars for me. I think I'm gonna have to think about it a little bit before I rate it, but definitely enjoyable. And if you want just like a break from reality and you want something light, heartwarming and just cozy, this is the perfect look. Now, my next read has a little bit of a different tone to it. We have a little bit of a tone shift. I started this and I am like 80 pages in or something. About 100, actually. And I don't know if I would call this cozy, actually, but it has been like recommended to me as a cozy fantasy. But so far it's darker than I thought it was going to be. The story in here follows this academic who has traveled to what I think is an alternative version of Iceland. I actually got super confused in the beginning of this book because this academic is from England and she is traveling somewhere and the names of the places and the way that the place names are written and described it's sort of like a mix of Scandinavian and Nordic languages. So it, when like she went to this place, I thought she was going to Norway because the name of the place is a place name in Norway. So I was like, oh, that's where it is. And then she's like, no, I'm on an island. And I'm like, you're on an island? What island? We have some islands, but I, I just got a little bit confused. And then <laughs> there was a place name written with like Icelandic letters and I was like, oh, I guess she's like in Iceland or something. <laughs> I don't know if anyone else would really notice that, but I got a little bit confused with that in the beginning. But she's made her way to this island, this place. It's quite rural and our main character is working on an encyclopedia. I have a really hard time saying that word. She's working on that for fairies who are real in this world and I think I thought that they, like, when I started reading this, I didn't think that the fairies would be so present, but they actually are. They're very present, so there is quite a lot of fantasy elements in here, which I really like. She goes to this village. She's a little bit of, like, she's a very straightforward person, and sometimes people find that offensive. So, like, on her first day in this village, she manages to offend, like, everyone. But the point where I'm at now she has like met some fairies, she's doing some research. There is one scene in here that actually like quite creeped me out because there's this changeling in a house that is low-key a little bit scary. 
And the first time she sees the changeling, I was like, ew, that was scary. She's joined by one of her colleagues at Cambridge, who's quite the character and also might be a fairy. I don't know. It does have a cozy vibe to it in a way. I think I was just a little bit surprised at some of the like darker elements. When I use the word dark, I don't mean like actually dark. I mean like dark for something that is supposed to be cozy. But I really like it. I love all of the fairy stuff and I like our main character who is quite the personality. She's kind of grumpy as well, which I really like. And the guy who's joined her from like, he's also an academic, he's more of like a sunshine character, which makes me wonder if there's like sunshine grumpy kind of trope in here as well. I wonder if I actually like that more when like the woman, if there's like a heterosexual relationship, if the woman is the grumpy one. I wonder if I'm gonna like that more because in this one, it's the opposite. It's the woman who is the sunshine and the guy who's the grump and here it's kind of like different. I guess I'm just assuming that there's going to be a romance between them, although right now they kind of hate each other, but they're also kind of friends, so. It's a little whimsical, it's a little cozy, it's a little magical. Very much enjoying it so far. I also do really like the setting once I got over the initial confusion, and yeah, I have high hopes for this as I go along. I wonder what's gonna happen. There's some stuff in this village that is quite like a little bit mysterious and there's a lot of interesting stuff with the fae and the fairies and I like that the magical creatures in here they're kind of like mischievous and a little bit dangerous in some ways it's not entirely just like safe cozy magic if that makes sense it feels a little bit more real in a way. There's also a lot of like forests and all of that is very cozy. Another thing that I kind of like in here as well is that the book has footnotes because the book is written as our main character's journal in a way and in her journal she has like footnotes and she writes like comments on like this is a reference to this fairy academic book and blah 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 and it's just like a nice little detail that makes you feel like this world is very well established in a way and I really really like that. Sometimes in fiction I feel like footnotes don't work as well but in this one I feel like it works very well. I'm gonna keep going and super excited to see where it goes. I have no idea where this is gonna end or like where it's going which is kind of exciting. It's less predictable I feel than the other book that I read. This I like I have no idea what's gonna happen. So it's been a little while and it took me more time to finish this than I thought, but it is not the book's fault. It's because I found a new fun game <laughs> on my Switch, <laughs> which I just played for an entire week and I did no reading. But when I returned to this, I fell completely back into it and oh, this book was so good. I do feel like it took me a little bit of time to get into this, but when I was like in it, it was amazing. I feel like the story takes a little bit of a turn when our main character's like colleague slash friend arrives and that like that's the part where it starts getting kind of cozy but it's also the part where things really start taking off and there's a lot of fae and fairy stuff in here and it's so good. The last like half of this I read all in one go because I was enjoying it so much and when I finished it I just had this you know this feeling you get when you've just finished a really good book and you put it down and you're like, oh, that was so satisfying because it was just so good and it's exactly what I wanted. I feel like this kind of cozy fantasy is like, because it's a little bit darker in some ways, it appeals to me more because I love kind of dark books and with I guess more like, not necessarily higher stakes, but it is a little bit higher stakes because the magic is just inherently a little bit darker. I also think I mentioned that I had no idea where the story was going and I felt that way <laughs> through the entire thing. And it took so many twists and turns and it just, 
it was just really magical and fun and enjoyable. I love our characters, like our main character and the friend which most of the story revolves around. And I love their like friendship and their relationship and it's just... This was just so good. <laughs> also, now that I'm thinking about it, I think one of the reasons that I enjoyed this book so much is that it has so much atmosphere in it and the setting is so vivid and I could really imagine it and it's just a very atmospheric book which is one of those things I just love in books and it's really important to me. Sometimes I don't notice when it's not there but I feel like something's missing and I can't like put my finger on it but usually it's like atmosphere and with this it just super atmospheric. It was darker but not super dark there's like a little bit of banter in here and all of the fey and fairy stuff is just so cool and so magical and i love how those creatures and that world is described in this book because it's interesting because our main character she studies these creatures right but she says that she can never fully understand them because they are so different and they just have completely different they just have a completely different view of the world and she kind of doesn't understand them but then she also tries to and it's interesting to see her perspective on these creatures and this world that she can never fully understand. I don't know how much sense that made but it is a little bit difficult to like talk about this book without spoiling it but just trust me it was so so good. I think that this is my favorite kind of cozy fantasy where it's light but not too light and it has like some darker elements to it and it's surprising and I like lighter cozy fantasies as well but I feel like this just hit like the perfect spot for me somehow in between like cozy fantasy and darker elements. I do think that I'm gonna have to think a little bit about the rating of this one as well, but it's somewhere between four and five stars for me. The thing that makes me a little bit apprehensive to give it five stars is because it took me a little bit of time to get into and I was like <laughs> super confused in the beginning, but I don't know if that was just my issue or the book's issue really, but this was just it was so good and I feel like if you like these kinds of books, you're just, you're gonna love it. I feel like this vlog is going really well and we're gonna end on a high note because I just finished this and it was so lovely. This, like I think I mentioned, is a graphic novel and I feel like this is perfect for this time of year because it's actually set in fall and it has some really beautiful autumnal like vibes to it. It has a very autumnal color palette and I'm trying to show you stuff that is not like spoilers. And the story follows this young witch who's living with her two grandmas and or she calls both of them Nana, like the Nanas. And she is a witch, she lives in the small town and she seems to do like magical missions around the town like if anyone needs anything she can like help them and she's told about this thing that might be happening out in the woods and she's like I'm gonna go check it out and this is like very early on in the story and in the forest she finds a werewolf who she actually knows from before because they were childhood friends and then this person who's a werewolf moved away, blah blah blah. They're now reunited and the plot of the book is that there is like a dark, magical, bad creature out in the woods that the wolf needs to use wolf magic to get rid of. It maybe sounds complicated, it's not that complicated a story. The book is around like 250 pages so it's limited how much you can put into that. But the story is about the witch and the werewolf and they also have a little bit of a relationship that blossoms quite quickly but I think it sort of alluded to the fact that the, they were on their way to being together before this person left and now they're back and they're picking up where they left off. 
they're very very sweet together and it's just a very sweet heartwarming cozy book although there is like an evil creature in here and there's some stuff with that most of the story is just about them trying to figure out their magic and just being together and it's very sweet there's some other stuff going on as well like they're in that part of their life where maybe it's time to move away from home and things like that it's just very i've said this word a million times now but it's very very sweet very lovely very much cozy fantasy i think this was also recommended to me by one of you so thank you for recommending it because so sweet. I also of course really like the artwork and I especially love these like, I don't know how well you can see it, but these little creatures that are like magical creatures that live in a magical part of the forest. The way that these are drawn is the sweetest thing I've ever seen. Like they pop up several times throughout the book and for some reason especially these little winged things, just looking at them makes me so happy. They're so incredibly cute and they are a part of the story but it's not like the main part of the story but for some reason that was like one of my favorite parts because there's something about seeing really cute things that just you know make me happy <laughs> i was gonna show you an illustration that's towards the back but it's kind of like a spoilery page so i can't show it to you but I feel like it's worth reading just for the little magical creatures because they're super, super cute. And it's just a very sweet little world in here. And it's... I like this a lot because it is low stakes in some ways, but there is actually stuff happening where you're like, ooh, I do wonder if all of this is gonna work out. <laughs> there is also like some representation in this book, which I thought was pretty cool. And... It's like a part of the story and it's mentioned because it affects the characters, but it felt like a very natural part of the book. Like the main character, the witch, has hearing aids and our character here goes by they, them. And there's also like some other things. And I really liked the way it was baked into the story. It just felt completely natural, but it is also, you know, it's important to have representation in stories. and. Thought it was done really well. I will say one thing though, I thought that like cooking and baking was gonna be a bigger part of the story based on the fact that it's called Mooncakes and the fact that there's like cookies on the back and she's like they're baking on the cover. There is like a scene with it but it's not a huge part of it really and I don't know I just thought it would be a bigger part of it. There are mooncakes in here but it's like it's just that one scene and then we're done. <laughs> That's fine, of course, I just thought that there would be more of it based on the cover design. I feel like this was just a treat to read. For me, this is a very solid 4 out of 5 star book. I would really, really recommend it if you like graphic novels. I really like this kind of art style. I think it's super cool. I like the characters and I feel like this like, sometimes when I read graphic novels that are standalones, I feel like they're too short, but I also understand that they can't be too long. I think that the length of this was perfect for this story, and you don't feel like you're missing out on stuff. You do feel like the characters are very well established, and it was just a very well done graphic novel, and really, really enjoyed it. It's also just, again, perfect for autumn. Now that I've read all three books though, I feel like I'm one step closer to understanding what kind of cozy fantasy that I really like and it just solidifies the fact that I do like cozy fantasy. I think it's pretty clear that this, out of all of them, was my favorite. Like this is the perfect balance of like cozy and a little bit like darker and a little bit more there's a little bit more tension and a little bit more meat to the story in here, I feel. And this is just... This is perfect for me, I feel. I would say that this is a contender for me for my favorite cozy fantasy with, like, Legends and Lattes, which I absolutely loved. I just thought that book was so, so good. They're very different books, though. This is more, like, foresty and it's maybe a little bit darker than Legends and Lattes, but... 
Right now, I would say that Legends and Lattes and this, these are like my favorite cozy fantasy books that I've read so far. Ooh, also Garlic and the Vampire, which is a graphic novel. And I guess that also counts as cozy fantasy, but those are like my top three that I've found so far. I do also feel like this sort of proves to me that cozy fantasy in graphic novel form, I think these are some of my favorite graphic novels. Like these are my favorite kinds of stories to read. I think that it's like this, Garlic and the Vampire and Pumpkin Heads are my favorite sort of like cozy graphic novels that I've read. And I really, really like those kinds of books. I, if anyone has any recommendations like this, I would love to know because I would like to read more. For this one though, I don't know what happened with this. I wonder if I went into this with expectations that just didn't <laughs> match what I read. I think I had quite high expectations of this book and I think I expected something a little bit different. This was very sweet. It's a lovely book. It's a book I would recommend reading, but it has been a couple of weeks since I finished it now and I'm not gonna lie, I, I do think that this is a little bit forgettable for me. For some reason, I just wasn't as... Like, I was invested when I was reading it, but when I put it down, I was just like, that was a good book, but it's not the kind of book where I feel like I'm gonna think about it a lot. Whereas this is the kind of book that is really gonna stick with me and that I'm going to remember. Why I'm gonna, like, I think this is just personal preference. Like, why I like this more than this, I don't know, I just... There were more elements in this that I, I guess, just like. I like it a little bit darker, a little bit more atmospheric. I wonder if one of the things with this is that I didn't feel like it was like super atmospheric. It was very cozy, but it wasn't, I don't know. I don't know. It's hard to explain, but it's just one of those books where I, I really liked it. I read and enjoyed it and I would recommend it, but like this though. This is my stuff. I do feel like this vlog was very much a success though and I'm really happy that I read all of these and my cozy fantasy journey continues because I keep finding more cozy fantasy books that I want to read. And yeah, it's just a very interesting genre. It is quite a broad genre so you can find a lot of things within it. And I feel like the more I read, the more I realize the elements that I really like in that genre. And I'm gonna have to just explore more and it's just these books are just so easy and cozy and I just love it. <laughs> if you've read any of these books though I would love to hear what you thought of them. I know especially a lot of people love this book and I totally get it. I do wonder if I just wasn't in the right mindset for it. Maybe that was what happened. But I know a lot of people love this book. I would also be really interested if any of you have read this and what you thought of it and also of course if anyone has any more cozy fantasy recommendations i would love to know especially if it's like this or this i, I would be really interested in that that's gonna be the end of this vlog though i hope you enjoyed it thank you very much for hanging out with me today and i will see you soon bye